Cracking Thai in 10 Sentences, episode number four. This is where I generate a set of 10 random sentences from over 4,000 of the most amazingly super useful expressions that have been curated by David Martin. I've created this interface here, so I don't even know what sentences I'm going to get in a moment. For the sake of time, I'm only going to be releasing the first three on YouTube because these explanations go deep. If you want to get all 10 sentences and the entire series, well, it's included in the bundle at jacademy.com. So come to jacademy.com. Let's get started. So I'm going to click here, fetch random 10 sentences. It's generating them up here. You should see them feeding in here. I've created this interface using the skills that we talk about in Minecraft. And so if you want to learn how to build tools like this and to be able to extract language from everywhere you go and have tech skills to be able to do stuff, well then you need Minecraft. Bang, the sentences are here. Let's get started. Sentence number one. <laughs> okay. This is fascinating and there's such rich vocabulary in here. This word here, ga, now note that this is with a common tone. Ga, ga, not ga. Ga means old, but ga, ga. This is a third person particle. You will often hear it used with friends and they might be talking to each other. So two girlfriends might be talking to each other and say, yeah, when they're addressing something, or if they're talking about a third person, he, she, somebody familiar to them, yeah, you would use this as the pronoun to refer to that person. So I guess similar to cow or in spoken Thai cow, but yeah, it's got a slightly different meaning and you'll hear it used all the time as this kind of neutral reference to a third party or it could mean you if the people are close and they're talking to each other. So, and so in this sense, it's obviously talking about the second person. So in this context, it means you. So, now notice here the word my when you learn Thai, your teacher probably taught you to write um, ho mo sala ai. So it would be mai with this rising tone as a question particle at the end. But in spoken Thai, mai, your throat doesn't want to drop all the way down there. And so it comes out as mai, mai, just like ma in Chinese. And so when you write it in colloquial Thai, you'll write it like this. Mo mai hanakad mai to yo yak mai. So ke ru mai. Did you know? Ru to know. Ru mei wa, wa from the Chinese word hua. Now hua literally means language or spoken, but here it's a connecting word. So did you know that? Wa, lu mei wa, tam arai long pai. Okay, so tam means to do, arai what? Tam arai, what did you do? Long pai. I absolutely love this. I'm chuckling. If you've done cracking Thai fundamentals, either read the book or you've done the course, you'll be chuckling too because these two words, long and pai, are in my set of 11 core words. Kun, long, pai, ma. And so these are vector words. Long literally means to go down. But in this sense, we're talking about time. So if you imagine a timeline and then this pai, ma, pai, ma, we're talking about going back and forth on this timeline. So long pai means to have done into the past. If you could imagine this timeline going into the past and it's fading into the distance. And so not only is it pai into the past, but it's long pai. So in English, this would be like putting it into the past tense. Did you know long pai what you have done? Do you know what you've done? Uh, what have they done here? Do you know what you've done? There you go. So this is fascinating. It shows us that we don't need to have parallel grammatical structures like we have in English and other maybe European languages. In Thai, we can use these vector words, which I cover ad nauseum in Cracking Thai Fundamentals. Get the book. And you can use this to achieve the same goals and even more because then things like tense and all of this become so granular. You can do what you want with it. Okay, next sentence. Sentence number 3516, that's 3516 from 4,000. I'll be updating these soon because David's done almost 4,500 now. I'll have to add those to the pool. This is from set 176. So again, I'll just show you down here. 
I pull these out in the sets as well. So sometimes we'll want to see these sentences in context and we can highlight it here, not just in random. So this is sentence number 16 out of set 176. So here we have in brackets, tini, tini means at. So t means at, at a point and ni, here. Notice ni is with a falling tone. If it was with a high tone, ni, it's this, it's indicating this. Ni, 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 ni. Tini. One thing that I'd like to say, and I've actually mentioned this in other clips in the past and also in Crack and Tie Fundamentals, try and stop using T so much if you're a learner of Thai. I'll notice that the general go-to proposition for many learners of Thai is T. So, Hong Nam Yu Ti Nai, where is the bathroom? Where a Thai would probably just say Hong Nam Yu Nai or Hong Nam Yu Tong Nai. They will use Trong or not use a preposition at all. So, T literally means at, but you've probably learned the word throng when you say throng by drive straight in your taxi tie. Um, throng literally means straight, but if you think of throng as an arrow shooting into a point and sort of quivering as it hits it, this is throng. So that's why throng by means to go straight ahead. But you'll often hear ties say tong ni here, tong nan over there, tong nai where. And so just as practice and getting out of the habit of using T all the time, maybe you're going to want to substitute it out with the word throng. So T ni could be tong ni, and then the word ban, ban. Okay, in this context means a house or a home. You'll often hear the word ban used for a small village as well. So it's often the name of villages or a mu ban. But here, ban kong kai kong is the possessive. So in Chinese, it would be the and would be the other way around. In Thai, Vietnamese languages in this part of the world, we will put the thing and then this possessive link and then the person who owns it. So, ban kong kai, house of who? So whose house is it? Ban kong kai, where in Chinese, standard Chinese, it'd be shi de jia or shi de fang zi. Whose house is it? Here is house of whom and this is something that you'll get right across there this is vietnamese grammar as well so tini ban kong kai whose place is this whose house is this pretty straightforward but actually there's rich language in there and the thing to take away from this if you can substitute t for throng a lot more than you're doing now and you're going to sound more thai next sentence sentence 3697 let's see what it says ta piang pu dio Oh, this sounds like a song. Um, okay, so there's some interesting language going on here. A lot of learners of Thai, they will learn the word only as taunan, taunan, and they will use that in many different contexts, or so all the contexts that you get only happening in English. And the reality is, is that Thais don't say stuff like that. So, for example, if I wanted to say I only have a hundred baht left in my wallet, if you're a foreigner wanting to say that, maybe you'll say something like I have 100 baht only. And people would understand what you say. Of course they understand, you'd think that you're saying it right. But the way Thais would say it would be maybe I have only a hundred. Now notice that I didn't even say baht. You could also say that, you could put baht in there. but. Normal Thai is much more economic in the way they use language, and this word ta will always show its head. So ta is probably the go-to way for a native Thai to say only. And if you only have something, you would say mi ta. So in that context, mi is the verb. So you would have the verb and then the word ta. If it were some kind of action, another example, maybe mum and dad are coming, you invited them to the house, and only dad came. So first of all, pa me, mum and dad, jamaban will come to see you at home. But if only dad came, you would say ma te kun pa. Only dad came, ma ta. So ma is to come ta. So they're kind of not in line with the way that we would grammatically structure it in English. But this is how you say it. So ma ta. Dad only came, ma ta kun pa. So the verb and then the word ta and then whoever it was. Um, so this is this usage of that, and it's very different to how you'd use only in English. Only dad came. And so in this sentence, ta piang pudio. So here we have ta 
only, think of it as only, not but. But in English, we actually kind of have this too. I am but human. I am only human. So I guess we have a similar meaning. And then we have Pyeong. Pyeong, again, is another sense of only. Um, it's very, the bare minimum. So for example, we have the Pyeong Po uh, sufficiency economy doctrine in Thailand. So this Pyeong is just, Pyeong Po, just enough. And so Ta Pyeong gives this feeling of only, just, the only one. And then Pu, Pu Dio. Here we have Pu meaning a person here. Notice that this is a high class Po with a Mei To giving it a falling tone. So Pu Dio, Pu Dio. And Dio means single. When you're saying one thing in Thai, you can substitute the word one, Ning, with Dio. So how many glasses of water would you like? Gao Dio, a single glass. You walk into a restaurant, you say to the waiter, Kun Dio, and that means you're here alone. Now you are Ning Kun or Kun Ning. You could also say that, but Kun Dio, Dio is probably the best substitute for one. So here it's quite poetic language. That's why I said it sounds like a song. You probably wouldn't say this in normal speech, uh, but that Pieng Pu Dio means only you and you alone. Um, so here, the one and only, he and he alone. There you go. Uh, so this is poetic language, but there are really good grammatical structures. Let's have a look down here and see the context that we've got. So, wow, that's a fascinating sentence in it themselves. So they were wanted, the police were after them for killing uh, his wife and her lover. Um, Black Yu Yang Ning. There's one thing that's strange. Ben Kiet Wong Ham. So this is a no go zone. Da Pieng Pu Dio. Okay, so only this person or you and you alone. So here, maybe this is from a movie or something and they were wanted and they were the only suspect. Maybe that's the way that it's being used there. This is why I like to have these 20 sentences from the actual set here because it gives a bit more context. But there you go. These are the first three sentences, so these will be going out to YouTube. Just in those three sentences, there's such rich vocabulary. If you'd like to see the next seven in this set, well, come to jacademy.com. You can see them all there. For those who are leaving us on YouTube, I'm Stuart J. Raj. Scan the QR code. I'll see you on the other side. For those who are staying in Jacademy, let's go to the next sentence. Thank you.